Ladies and gentlemen, I think you notice it's been a while since I've been here. And I want to tell you why. Later tonight we're going to have a conversation. I don't feel we've had a conversation with this council for many, many years. Mr. Cohn was my council member for 18 years. We used to come here and have an open dialogue, give and take. We bring up comments to you. You would comment back. We'd ask questions. Gosh, an opportunity to come before the public dais in the sacred halls of our city council and be able to redress our grievances to our elected representative. What a revolutionary concept. A couple of years ago, you passed draconian laws limiting the people's right to redress of grievances before this body. You limited the amount of time that we have to address you. You continue to put more and more items on your consent calendar, and then you tell us, Mr. Janae, if you have questions or comments on four items on a 30-item consent calendar, you get 30 seconds apiece. Is that the Brown Act? When I was here last year to talk about the budget we're going to be talking about on item 12, I had to stop in the middle of my presentation. But rather than say what I said then, I'll quote another resident who's appeared before this council many times. Laughs Unlimited is an old Sacramento. This isn't comedy hour. Show some respect. And show some respect for the Brown Act because I guarantee you, thanks to the police chief's next door social network, this community is going to react. And we're going to react every November. If you don't listen to us, and if you don't make eye contact, and if you treat us like we're second class citizens. Thank you. This thing about subpoenaing uh, the tax here, you are suffering for money. That's your problem. You are suffering for money. That's too big a corporation to cook the books. And you know that. So what are you trying to get out of them? You want to see more tax paid to this city when the city is not showing us where the money is being spent. Who is profiting? Who is agency is self-sufficient? And what agency is not self-sufficient? That's what this we want. It's kind of strange the way you guys are doing business now. And I'm very upset. You all have hijacked this whole thing around. We don't even understand who's going to be called. Mr. Boyd, do you now. want to make comments on item number five? I am making a comment five? about this number five because Go I ahead. didn't understand how it went. Excuse me. You're interrupting me now. We're sitting there in silence, not interrupting you, but you jump at the opportunity to interrupt people, Councilwoman Ashby, or is it Mayor Ashby, whatever it is. All right. Okay, Thank item you. number five, from what I understand, is about the McKinley Park restrooms. I was at the Clooney uh, meeting that Councilmember Cohn had a couple of weeks ago. I had to use that restroom in the back, and I think I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. That restroom has been a mess for 30 years. I grew up in that park. I swam at the, I was on a Clooney swim team back in the 70s, and that thing was a mess. Some of these parks have been a mess. Now you're having to close them because you're saying they're, they're too hard to upkeep. You never kept them in the first place. That is a sad, stinking shame. And we talk about public safety. I had to go into that thing. Kids were still playing on the tennis court at night, and the thing was so dark, I thought somebody was going to come back there and strangle me. Pitch dark. No toilet paper, no nothing. Same thing across the street over here at the Cesar Chavez Park. That's a hot mess. Where's the police chief and all this stuff? We talk about public safety with rape among young kids and teenagers on the uprise. And this is the stuff we want to sit up here and worry about the arena, and that's our crown and glory. We have some things over here that we need to atone to. And the lack of transparency that these people keep talking about, there is a lack of transparency. We need to start showing people where this money is being spent. And let's not disenfranchise the voices because the people that would have been in here speaking tonight, it's cold outside. I'm on a committee for the homeless people, but I can't bring them in here because they can't stay out that late. Buses don't run. These people all have cars to get into and homes to, warm homes and beds to sleep in when they go home tonight. So please, let's do something honorable and focus something on just not about this corporate and about the arena, about everything else, about public safety, the bathrooms, the kids. There's a lot of things you have to talk to. Thank you. Can we talk about a budget and projection of the future? We'll ask questions here about this finance statement of the, uh, the 200 and some uh, million dollars assets you're going to use here. What is the finance statement? now from the king. We also ask you what is the income from the sleep train arena now uh, coming into the city and what department that uh, takes care of its own operation. The public needs to know that. But what we see here, and you go back and look at how many of you know what a, a Ford F-550 is chassis? How many of you know what a 
sewer pipe, uh, a maintenance body is, a sidekick, an easewind machine. You're buying something, you don't even know what you're buying. Now, that's uh, over a quarter of a million dollars, and you didn't go to one organization in this city said, would you purchase that for us and, and lease it to the city? That's how you connect to a city. Let the people invest, and you pay the money out, which would be cheaper. That would be a quarter of a million dollars that you don't spend. But yet still you say, the budget, what are you really saying? other than you are lying. You own your needs. This city is on its needs for finance now, and you know it. So come on out and tell them the truth. The budget. We were on a, uh, a slippery slope under the last administrations, and they went on a building spree, spending spree, and we're still trying to recover, and then there seems to be a lot of pressure to do more development, more building, but what's very disturbing is to hear people make statements, we know health care and pension costs are going to go up. Really? You just made a statement that you cut the, uh, the city manager just said they cut the number of employees, so we're actually it should go down, not up. Um, so I'm a little confused. It sounds very convoluted to me. And it, it's disturbing when people just make blanket statements like uh, this is how it's going to be. Adjustment. Now, adjustment can go two ways, up or down. Which one do you intend to do? This is Dick and Jane Lane. If you're going to charge fees here, uh, up and down, say what way you're going to do. Adjustment up or adjustment down. This is where I'm going to tell you. The city is on its knees. You ain't going to adjust nothing down. You're going to increase those fees. And you know it. Did any city council take this to their constituency? No. Why? They passed uh, a sale tax for you. At least you should trust them something. Give them something to be interested in you in. Instead of sitting here looking at me like I'm from cloud nine, I'm from cloud ten. Uh, wake up, people, because you are pimping the people. This is really pimping the people. When you can explain and put a word in something to vote on, adjustment. If a kid would write an a essay and say adjustment, wouldn't the teacher would be interested in what you're going to adjust? What would be the adjustment to what? Adjustment to the fees. What are the fees? I just asked you. What department pays for itself? We want to know those things, and we can. when you say an adjustment, we can ask you what departments you got to subsidize. We know all those beautiful things up on the uh, screen now. The police department and the fire department is 82% of your budget. Parks and recreation, that's temporary jobs. Give some poor folks some decent jobs in this town. And that makes sense. You're going to raise the fees. If they apply for a business license, you're going to raise the fees. You had it at $300, and I complained that once it dropped $250 to work out of your house. People. Wake up and help the poor folks in this town. Yes, these men and their hypnotized followers call this a new order. It is not new and it is not order.